Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rox and I'm coming to you today with the review for Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 6, Episode 15. It's President's Day and I was feeling a little presidential so I put on me a, my uh, flag sweater. <laughs> it's cute, huh? I got it from Forever 21. I had to go on and get up. I am off today. However, I could not do another video without any makeup and trying to, you know, at least get myself together a little bit. I was looking at the mess in that last video. I was like, ooh, girl, you look flicked. So, got up, put a little makeup on, put a little jewelry on. Still ain't got everything on, but just tried to make myself look like something so you could look at something decent for 25 minutes. Because that's, I think that's how long this video going to be, about 25 minutes. Give or take a few minutes. I just watched the episode. I didn't watch it last night because I was watching the um, All-Star Game. So I'm fresh off of the show. Okay, y'all. And this show was crazy. It was kind of frustrating. I was just like, oh. The show is definitely going through some changes. And we're going to talk about that a little later. It's not too much I really have to talk about today other than two or three people. Candy. Kenya and definitely Nini. Okay, so with all that being said, let's get to it, shall we? Now, we thought that we was all done with this Candy, Joyce, Todd, Carmen, love, hate, rectangle, but um, evidently we're not. First of all, you guys, before we even get started on all that mess, let me just let me just deal with this goddamn play that they insist on hoisting on us every week. I know it's Candy's baby and everything, but it's just like, it's too much shit going on. Don't nobody give a fuck about that play, but okay. Let's talk about it. They pretty much got everything casted. They just have to cast a few other roles. And uh, one of the roles being um, the role of Jada, which is uh, my baby's name. My baby Sita. Her name, Jada. So they have to cast the lead character, which is Candy's character, her little sister. And the girl's name is Jada. That is the role that Portia is trying out for. They got the casting director there. They got Don Juan. They got... Candy, they got Todd there, and they're all gonna sit there and listen to uh, Portia sing and act, okay? Ain't nobody really feeling too hopeful. Well, Candy is feeling hopeful, but everybody else is kind of just sitting there like, mm. they need her to sing, and they need her to run off a few lines, okay? So Portia, Portia says she a little bit nervous. I'm nervous about the acting. I have no problem doing the singing, because I'm gonna sing a gospel song. I know I'm gonna be conflicted. Oops, did I say conflicted? I mean convicted. <laughs> hey, what she said, y'all messed up. <laughs> and I know I'm gonna be convicted. Okay, Portia, but... Anyways, you guys, surprisingly, she she does pretty good, okay? She runs through the lines, kind of fucks them up a little bit, but, uh, you know, we all mostly concerned about the singing, so he gets up there with every Deaconess's favorite song, His Eye is on the Sparrow. Y'all know the one with Sister Ruthie get her 300-pound self up there on that pulpit and sing her heart out? Well, let me, let me, um, let me get a few bars out for you real fast. <clears throat> Why do I feel discouraged I do the shadows come <laughs> y'all know them old people be loving it mother parker be stretched out on the on the aisle Jesus is my Portion. A constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. <laughs> Y'all see my ugly face. And I know he watches. He watches me. Hey! Ooh, I almost caught the spirit a little bit up in here. Be done tore this whole car up. Let <laughs> me get back to the uh to the thing here. I was I was sucked into that for a minute. I had to sing it down in the alto though, cause y'all that soprano be killing me. But y'all y'all was feeling it on that alto, wasn't you? <laughs> anyway, y'all, everybody is quite pleased with her performance. She does pretty good. She's definitely, um, you know, she can sing. I mean, she ain't fixing to put no albums out or nothing, but she definitely could sing a song in the choir. So I was like, okay, Portia. Later on, we find out that the girl get the part, okay? So we done with that, all right? So let's get to the bullshit. Candy is getting herself in shape for this play. 
Okay, she feels like she needs to do some extra working out, so she's working out to the donkey booty with uh, Phaedra and the criminal formerly known as Apollo. <laughs> she invites Carmen over to work out with her, and when Carmen gets over there, she's all down in the dumps, y'all. She running way low. Carmen then found out who been running back and filling Joyce's head with all this malarkey. Basically, there's somebody named Benny, okay? Benny was talking to Crystal, and uh, Crystal went back and told uh, Mama Joyce that uh, supposedly um, Carmen and Todd had went out and uh, was getting busy, I guess, and Candy caught him, um, but I guess maybe Candy ain't supposed to be saying nothing that she caught her best friend and their man fucking or something like that. I mean, they didn't say fucking, but this is just the vision that I got in my mind. <laughs> Y'all know Candy. Candy just like, what? Anybody who believes that needs they ass whooped. Well, then that means your mama need her ass whooped, Candy. Carmen, like anybody else who has been lied on, okay, she calls to confront the girl, Crystal. Okay, and I guess it's some words said and Carmen was like, bitch, you keep on talking shit about me. I come over there and whoop that ass, okay? And Crystal could not wait to jump her ass up off that phone and call Joyce and tell her what happened. <laughs> and it's just like, why did you call her? And I was just like, girl, why you call her? Because you know that Mama Joyce wasn't going to stand for that shit. Joyce come calling Carmen, and y'all, I just laughed because I was just like, oh my god. Like, you know, she doesn't even frustrate me and make me mad no more because I just keep on picturing this old ass lady thinking that she about to whoop up on some young ass girl. <laughs> I'm just like, where, where they do that at? I really think that Joyce is crazy, you guys. And it's still, with all of this that we gonna say, it's still gonna be somebody down in my damn comments telling me how Joyce is still just looking out for Candy's best interest. Please! Okay? That, let me know there's something fucking wrong with you, too! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Stupid ass! Anyway, so, Joyce calls Carmen, you guys, and just be patient with my Joyce voice because <laughs> I'm gonna try to get through this without laughing. Carmen, what the fuck you call Crystal for? You know it's the damn truth, but I tell you one thing. You put your hands on that girl and I promise I'm gonna drag you up and down the street like you was a damn rag. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wish the hell you would touch her, you low down heifer. I was like, oh, oh, not a heifer though. <laughs> So y'all know that Candy was speechless. She was just like, I can't believe she said all that. <laughs> Yes, Candy, you just heard the damn recording now. We ain't on no he say, she say no more. Your mama said it. Carmen goes on to tell her how Benny said that um, Mama Joyce tried to set Todd up and was just like, look, I'm going to set him up. You guys go out. You take him out. Y'all be around some women. You know, let Todd get up on the women and be feeling on the women. And maybe you can get some pictures and everything. And I'll pay you for it. Benny told you that. Carmen was like, yes, Benny told me that. Why the fuck you got to ask a question after everything? Everything I say, Candy said, Candy said that she's always envisioned her two families meshing together. You know, Todd's mother and her mother being best friends and they go on fucking family vacation together. And I was just like, no, Candy, that is not how it is going to work, baby. So Candy knows that she has to tell Todd, okay? They sit down in the backyard one day and she's just telling Todd all of the stuff that Carmen told her that Joyce did. Tells him about the recording and everything. He was just like, what? Your mama ain't went there with it, did she? Candy tells him how, you know, Carmen took up for him and how she was going to tell the girl she would beat her ass. And, you know, he was like, good. Finally, somebody fucking speaking up for me. God damn, if I didn't like Candy and Carmen so fucking much, I would say maybe Todd and Carmen was doing some shit. They might be better for each other. <laughs> shit. <laughs> At least Carmen run a fight for your damn man, Candy. You better get it to fucking gather. Now, they call Carmen down there, I guess, really for back up for Todd, okay? Todd is totally over it, and who can blame him, okay? He tells her that he has no respect for her mother, and you know, Candy's just like, now, wait a minute now. And he was like, no, wait a minute, just let me speak. Let me speak, okay? Your mother is just really running you, okay? She's mind-fucked you. She's gonna continue to mind-fuck you as long as you let her, and she's gonna run this household. She's gonna run your business. She's gonna run this fucking relationship. Everything that we do, she's gonna run as long as you let her. And if you don't get this shit straight, I tell you what, I might have to go on and tell you that we might just need to be friends, okay? So, you know, Candy, then she's just like, so you're saying that you leave me? That fucking Candy skull got to be about this thick, y'all. <laughs> Ha ha ha.
He says, yes, Candy, it is an option. And I was glad that Todd finally said something because up until now, he's been trying to, try to be pretty respectful. He's tried to let Candy handle it. And Candy has never really felt the urgency of, you know, the place that her relationship is in. The relationship with her mother and with her man. Most importantly, her man, okay? So y'all know that Candy, I think this finally maybe might sinks in a little bit, okay? So she starts up with the broke up cry. I would rather be hurt to let my mom continue to be upset. I'm sorry that you guys don't understand that. <laughs> I was like, Candy, this bitch been crying all season. I know she feel like Evelyn shit. So Candy says she's torn, and you guys, it's kind of like talking to a brick wall. It's so frustrating, but it's really nothing that anybody can say anymore. This is something that Candy has to work through her on her own. Because if the people that close to her can't get through to her, it might be something that will never, ever do. You know, she might not never get to see it unless she gets to some therapy because that's what they tell her eventually. That's what she needed, some goddamn therapy. Todd is like, there's absolutely no man that is going to stay in your life when your mother continues to do shit like this. I mean, trying to set me up and send women around for me to fill on and take pictures of. Like, why don't you understand that there's something wrong with that? I just feel sorry for Candy because that statement lets you know that she's willing to put her mother's happiness before hers, okay? And such a mistake because you cannot never be happy if you're trying to make everybody else happy. When do you make the time for yourself, okay? Any woman that does that will die an unhappy woman. Now... Kenya is going by Lawrence's salon just to kiki key key it up, okay? And when she gets there, who should be there? But lo and behold, Marlo. We are still trying to get used to seeing Marlo on Real Housewives of Atlanta, okay? Ever since she uttered the word faggot on that episode back when she did, uh, she had been pissed off Andy and all the Bravo bigwigs, and uh, they swore her ass off the show. But for whatever reason, they have brought her back. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, Kenya and Marlo are talking about how they haven't seen each other since they were at the vineyard and you know Marlo was laughing about the fact that Kenya had put um, Natalie on the spot about not being Christopher Williams wife and uh, then they get to talking about the pillow talk event and uh, Marlo was just like I'm happy I wasn't there I was like bitch I asked though you would have loved to be there okay the queen of messy would have been right up in the middle of all of that Kenya tells Marlo that you know she couldn't believe that Nene tried to put the blame all on her then we started with the shade now this was low-key shade Marlo was just like well you know Nene's not always right but you know I just have a lot of respect for her I kind of look up to her as the older sister <laughs> I was just like wait a minute are we all about the same age then Kenya gonna go say yeah I kind of felt that same way too and I was just like now I know Kenya and, and, and Nene are around the same age I don't know how old Marlo is but really I'm, you know, if I'm in my mid-30s, I'm not looking up to Nene as no big fucking sister, and she only 60 years older than me. Can you start talking about the masquerade ball slash charity fundraiser um, that she's going to have? Um, and that the proceeds from the fundraiser are going to go towards Nene's... Um, charity that she supports which is saving our daughters kenya's whole angle is i'm gonna kill her with kindness so the first order of business is to meet at bar one okay cynthia offered her space at bar one so that they can um meet about whatever this is that it's gonna be when kenya gets there we find out that it's going to be a bachelor auction at the um, charity event. This is the space that they want to use to, you know, audition the bachelors. So she sits down and then Marlo comes in. Okay, by surprise, we got Marlo who is also going to be a judge for the bachelors. They get some old broke down ass looking men in there that I wouldn't fucking give a McDonald's gift certificate <laughs> for, let alone a couple of dollars. I was just like, now bravo, y'all could at least gather up some old strong, you know, beefcake looking men for the guy damn thing y'all gonna bring these niggas in there just dilapidated and <laughs> fucked up looking <laughs> anyway they go through these six guys and um you know n none of them really are gonna do okay so i was just like damn why can you every time can you try to do something that shit just be half-assed i mean damn bravo help a bitch out okay so later on in the show Portia believes that, um, you know, she wants all the girls to go skating. I wanted to get everybody out moving so we could stop all this damn fighting and bickering and stuff. And they have a good enough time, y'all. I was sitting there looking at the fucking screen like, now all the damn skating rinks out here in Atlanta. If you live in Atlanta, you know that skating is a big deal out here, okay? And they got a lot of popular, really nice skating rinks. Why the fuck we in somebody's garage, <laughs> okay? I was just like, where the fuck are 
movie. They had lines and shit drawn on the ground. I was just like, they know they bootleg. Off track though, y'all. So anyway, you know, the girls have a good time. And then after they all sit down and have a little talk see, um, Candy is just like, Kenya, have you talked to Nene yet? Cynthia had already told us that Nene had texted her earlier and told her, have fun, which implied that Nene wasn't coming. Kenya was just like, no, I haven't talked to her. I haven't really talked to her since the Pillow Talk event. Um, but um, you guys all know that I already apologized to everybody for my part in that. And um, But you know that we all can get a little crunk and a little out of control. And you know, everybody's temper tempers have have calmed down and so you know they can all kind of laugh it off and kind of just like yeah shit did kind of turn up real fast so that's it whatever they decide to let bygones be bygones and you know for the most part it was a good outing um they bring up the fundraiser ball masquerade ball that kenya's having and immediately Portia and Candy both let her know that they're not going to be able to make it, that there's going, you know, that they have other engagements. But as far as everybody else concerned, so far everybody is supposed to be coming. But not so fast, okay? Nene and Cynthia get together, and uh, once they sit down, Cynthia's like, girl, so are you going to the ball? And Nene is like, what ball? I don't know anything about no ball. Nobody's called me about a ball. I haven't talked to anybody. I haven't got an email. I haven't got a text message or anything. But then in the same breath, she goes on to say that Marlo called her and asked her the same thing. Was she going to the ball that uh, Kenya's having this masquerade ball that's a charity fundraiser event for, you know, the saving our daughters and how she was going to be honoring Nene. So now I'm just like, well, what the fuck is it, Nene? Did you not know or did you know? Obviously you knew about it. You just sat there and said that Marlo told you about it. So now why are you sitting there and telling Cynthia that you didn't know nothing about it? So we already know where Nene is about to be, okay? Just messy. She tells Cynthia that as far as she's concerned, she's not coming because if she's going to be at this function that's supposed to be honoring her and everything, she's going to wait for her call from Kenya. So it's the day of the big event and Kenya's getting ready. Cynthia calls Kenya. Kenya's just like, have you talked to Nene? Is she coming? And Cynthia's like, I've been talking to her all day. She is not coming because she hasn't talked to you. And as far as she's concerned, she don't know nothing about it. Uh, Kenya's like, I know she knows about it because I can tell right here on my on my computer that she opened up the e-bike. Let's just, let's just look at this a little closer, shall we? First of all, e-bikes are probably the most informal way of inviting somebody to something and it's okay i guess but if you having something that you want it to be this great big grand to do maybe a formal invitation would be the better way to go i understand in the interest of time maybe she didn't have time to have these invitations made and maybe it was easier to have an evite but evites when you're trying to throw something large like this is kind of tacky then when you put into consideration that you're on this popular ass show Okay, with all these people watching, you mean to tell me that you couldn't really put together a function that had enough time to print out some fucking invitations and send it to everybody? See, this right there lets you know that shit is thrown together. Okay, like I said, can you be doing shit half-assed? So, I would be willing to be on Nene's side saying that if you are having an event and you are honoring somebody, yes, there needs to be a phone call. Now, in Nene's defense, we all know that Kenya did not... Uh, RSVP to her wedding, did not call, did not text or anything. So Nene probably is on all of that. Not only is she still remembering that, but she's they fresh off that pillow talk shit. And, um, you know, Nene might be in her feelings about that. I just kind of feel like if you would have just called then we could have squashed all of that and you could have, you know, gave her a heads up. Listen, I'm having this cha charity fundraiser. It's for your um, saving our daughters and I want to give the money to you. And that would have been it, okay? And I know that Kenya knows better. I'm sure she knew that. I kind of feel like um, Kenya did not purposely call uh, Nene because she knew that it would irritate Nene. I'm sure that everybody has told her in between that time that, girl, you need to call Nene. She don't know nothing about it. She ain't going until you say something. And Kenya probably was like, fuck that bitch. I'm not calling at all now. She didn't call. Knew it would irritate Nene. We all know how Nene could be. Okay, so this was just a plot for Nene to be so aggravated to come to the damn thing and then act an ass. And that's exactly what she did. She played into Kenya's hands. So long story short, Nene shows up. She's got this stank-ass funky attitude. She don't want to be there, but she's dressed up. 
because Cynthia is relieved. Um, Kenya's glad to see Nene, but she can already tell that Nene's got this fucked up attitude. And she was just sort of like, yeah, you know what, then why the fuck you even come? Kenya, ever the gracious host, <laughs> she gets up there and she does her whole little presentation about why she's having this auction. Um, you know, uh, what it's for, the charity event. Um, it's for her one of her best good girlfriends, Nene, who is in support of the Saving Our Daughters Foundation. And Nene, would you come up and have a word, please, now? You guys know, like I just said, we all know how Nene is, okay? Bitch is mad. Now she just been put on the spot. She did not know she was going to have to get up there and say anything. <laughs> she cannot quite check that attitude soon enough to get her ass up there and act right. Nene gets up there and she was just like, huh, well, it's funny how I have so many friends that I didn't even know about them. Okay, Saving Our Daughters is one of many charities that I support. So I would like to thank Saving Our Daughters. And she gave the damn mic back. I was just like, and she didn't even make no sense. You know, it was real uncomfortable. Everybody was just kind of standing there like, what? Like I said, she played right into Kenya's hands. Of course, Kenya acted like, you know, she was uncomfortable and acted like that. But that's exactly what she wanted to happen out of Nene. And she had to know that that was going to happen. Peter is just like, you know what? I'm over it. I'm ready to go. Okay, Cynthia's just like, wait, what? Are you ready to go? So, of course, you know, Peter's leaving. That means Cynthia's leaving. That means Mal's leaving. Uh, Nene says that she's ready to go, too. So, she tells Greg that she's ready to go as well. Okay, so basically, the whole Real Housewives of Atlanta cast, the ones that are there, because Portia, um, Candy, uh, Phaedra, and um, uh, 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 Portia, Candy, Phaedra. Who, who's the other one? Portia, Candy, Phaedra. I can't even think of the other Is it another one, y'all? I'm telling you. Anyway, they, they didn't come. So, basically, the whole cast leaves out. They're out in front of the, the um, place. You know, Cynthia's just like, you know, Peter, why why are you leaving? What's, what's the deal? And he was just like, you know what? I, I, I didn't want to be there. Okay? That shit was not cool, what Nene just did. I can't be in support of something like that. Okay? Well, she just made everybody look very uncomfortable. And uh, shit wasn't right. And he was right. The shit was not right. Nene, I guess she overhears what he says, so she comes back over. Excuse me, Peter, did you have something to say to me? And he was just like, yeah, okay, I said that I wanted to leave because I could not be in support of what you did. That shit that you just did in there was not cool. You no, know, she just goes into her whole, I am Nene, and ain't no other bitch in here on my level, so ain't nobody gonna be sitting up here and talking to me and treat me any old kind of way. And he was just like, you know what, but that is not even the point, okay? This is a charity function, okay? Whatever you got going on with Kenya this is a charity of function so for you to come up here and do that and make everybody be uncomfortable is just not right Nene get to saying how she's upset that Cynthia ain't saying nothing to stop her man and how she just standing there and looking but I was just like fuck Greg ain't saying nothing either but y'all know how Greg is say it with me I am Greg Leaks I am a professional Nene Leaks husband that is what the fuck I do <laughs> Greg wasn't gonna say shit either. Nene was just like, why is he all in a woman's business anyway? But see, this is, in this case, it's a little different, okay? Because Peter was talking to Cynthia, okay? Nene is the one that came over there and confronted Peter, okay? It wasn't like Peter walked up to her and said anything. Of course, if you say something to me, I'm gonna fucking say something back to you, right? Peter was just telling her how he felt. She asked him what he said and he told her, okay? So, yeah, it's not really Peter being in the woman's business right now. Now it's just that you being told what the fuck is wrong with you. He was very very smart to walk away to avoid another situation where people are saying that Peter is always in some woman's face. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> the white hair monster has struck again. Now, what I wanted to talk about is, um, I know that all of you guys who are, um, follow Funky Deneva on Instagram or follow his blog or whatever, know that there is an article up that's talking about how, um, you know, the tides are turning at Bravo and how, it looks like Nene is getting kind of cast, pushed to the side, and that Kenya is now given the top spot. We all saw how the shit was about to shift last season, okay, when Kenya came in with such a big bang, and uh, Nene uh, really was not too concerned, okay, Nene was above the bullshit, okay, she was doing her TV show, she had Glee and New Normal, didn't really be really too concerned about, you know, the drama at Real Housewives of Atlanta. I think we all liked Nene for that. 
Okay, I think that Bravo went out of their way to accommodate Nene, um, made sure that they were able to work with her schedule. I mean, she was moved, you know, flying back and forth between Atlanta and Los Angeles to film her TV shows. And, um, you know, now that her shows was canceled, um, maybe Nene has come back thinking that she, you know, needs to be, you know, on this top spot again. And maybe Bravo is like, wait a minute, bitch, let me knock you back a couple of pegs, okay? Because um, this ain't, you know, we can't just have you coming and going when the fuck you feel like it last week a production assistant um, wrote a letter to the blogs anonymously of course talking about that whole pillow talk event nini was upset with production because she felt like they were using kenya to upstage her event um the fact that kenya was late you know nini was like i'm the star of this show i'm not waiting around for this bitch you know and they basically told her yes the fuck you are gonna wait till she get here and uh, nini didn't like that she kind of feels like bravo is um you know trying to oust her now of course i'm not saying that i'm just saying that that's what these articles are saying and um i just want to know what you guys think notice how kenya is starting to look on the show okay notice that she's looking better notice that she's starting to befriend folks notice how she's brought that attitude down notice how she's starting to calm down a little bit if somebody didn't got in her fucking ear and told her listen you don't need to be nasty no more okay we're gonna do it a little differently okay you calm down and let nino's Nino. Nini's big ass ego take over, okay? Nini will self destruct. As an extra twist, Bravo has added Marlo back to the show, okay? When we all thought that Marlo was gone. We know that Marlo is the queen of mess, okay? Now Marlo knows how to take that knife and twist it a whole lot more. We know that Nini and Marlo are at odds. Why would Bravo even bring Marlo back on there unless they wanted to get under Nini's skin? So I'm asking you guys, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Bravo is trying to do something to Nini? You know, are they feeling some kind of way with the way that Nini has been acting with them in these last in this last season? Or do you think they're just letting Nini's true color show? All right, you guys, that is it. Um, Basketball Wives LA is tonight, and I plan on doing a review for that tomorrow. And uh, top of the blogs this week, you know, we're back to a regular week as long as we don't have any other setbacks. All right, so you guys remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Miss Rocks. The channel is Sports Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.